It is me, Duke CT Live. Once again, here on the Duke CT Lounge on this Friday evening. And man, what an interesting couple of weeks it has it been. Whew. And let me, before I get into all that stuff, let's get into the uh, calls. You want to connect to me? Duke CT is is very simple. First, you got the chat room on talkshowlive.com. Remember, you can go on there, look at that, and chat everything up. Then you have the dial if you want to call. Me, Duke CT. It is easy. Just dial 724 444 Once again, the number is 724 444 And the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. Once again, the call ID is 92417. Woo wee! What a smackdown, huh? Well, besides that, well, I didn't really care for the Dolph Ziggler. Um, you know, Biggie Langston, AJ, Caitlin stuff. I don't care about that because, to be frank with you, I don't really care. I mean, Dolph Ziggler, as good as he is, he got some nice theme songs, he does great moves. I mean, let's be real, he hasn't really won any matches. He hasn't done anything important in so long that I want him to do well, but in the end, he just loses so many times. Biggie. Well, he might have that outward personality, but he's so bland, so dull, so completely utterly incompetent at his job. Seriously, multiple times that he actually tried to help Biggie. Uh, no, Biggie tried to help um, Dolph Ziggler and AJ when when they were all three together. They failed spectacularly. I have never seen a a a, a muscle guy fail at his job and keep having his job. Since Jackson Andrews and back in the day. Jeez. Please. I mean, wow. I mean, when you have a backup guy, or at least someone like, say, uh, like a problem solver would have you and uh, Christian and Tyson Tomko, I mean, at least they did something positive. At least they helped the guy out. This is just really, you know, this Biggie Langston, might, for the majority of the time, Biggie Langston got his, uh, not only he got his butt kicked, but most times than not, Dolph Ziggler got his butt kicked, and AJ got her butt butt kicked. So, yeah, you know she has she she just doesn't really get a good job. Seriously, she's never really got adequate protection. All right, moving on from that, you had let's see, and also the match don't care about. Also, men's call matches fine, whatever. I'm fine with wrestlers having their own matches. Hey, Bully Ray can um, uh, make matches on the fly or what have you in TNA, why not the Miz in WWE? Um, let's see. Kofi Kingston losing? <laughs> uh, to find out, go. Well, that, yeah, that ride was uh, quick. That was quick, huh? And a pointless match. And you have to wonder, since it was a ride back to intro, why not have ride back a Kofi face or something like that? That makes more sense. In fact, when Ryback was leaving for Raw or what have you, have Kofi Kingston return, come back, assault Ryback, hell, throw him back in the ring, get him a Wall Stronger slam or something. Hey, it will say Kofi Kingston's back and he's coming after Ryback. And you have, bam, you have another SummerSlam match, or you want to do, you know, want to tease, you know, that would be really interesting. I mean, why not? It would have been much more interesting and, and better than just having a pointless match for a ago. And speaking of, of, um, match uh, people who are not being part of SummerSlam. Where the hell is RVD and Randy Orton? I mean, Randy Orton's not going to compete at SummerSlam. You're almost telling people that he's going to be cashing in the WWE title. Why not put him in a, mul- a multi-man match with Del Rio? I mean, with Del Rio and Christian. I mean, that would make more sense. And you have RVD, who honestly has been gangbuster since he came back to the WWE. Uh, and Let's be frank about it. <laughs> He's not booked in a match. It's stupid. It's stupid. Why in the world he is not booked for SummerSlam and Christian is? And I love Christian. He's a great match. I, 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 I weeped when he lost that world title to Randy Orton, but dude right now does not have the high type of buzz with, Randy, uh, with uh, RVD. Orton has. I honestly surprised that Randy uh, that RVD didn't get a shot 
We're from Del Rio, who, again, is not really over and, well, again, I don't really care for. And besides, he took out his main guy, you know, the person that I actually cared about him, who was with him, uh, uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, since he's out of the fray now, you know, I don't really care about it, Del Rio anymore. I mean, he just took the most interesting part of him and just, you know, he's just there. And without Ricardo Rodriguez, he's nothing. He's bland. He's, I don't miss him when he's gone. In fact, when he's gone, I'm like, I don't really care about him. Alberto Del Rio, maybe he is a great ring technician and all that stuff, but he has no personality. I don't care about Del Rio. Why should fans don't even care about him? They just like, they, they react with silence most of the time. In fact, the only reason why I got cheers is when Ricardo Rodriguez shows up and says, Alberto Dario, same thing on Monday Night Raw when he came back. You know, you know that's, a, that's the only one Ricardo, I mean, Alberto got over because Ricardo, oh, Ricardo uh, had a single spare Royal Rumble. People cheered him. They loved him. And when he was out against, um, I think a couple of years ago when um, Miz and, and um, our truth was feuding, and he and uh, the Miz intimidated Ricardo Rodriguez was just a bit of a laugh. <coughs> I mean, seriously. And then you have him go and say, "We're taking Luke Kucharacha." Dude was got cheered. I, I have no idea why in the world. Tell you, he's saying, you know what? We care more about my brother Del Rio. I think maybe that's the reason why he's been losing so much. I mean, he hasn't really got anything. I mean, maybe he's just this whole losing and realizing that, man, wow, I suck. I need to get the, uh, I need, I need Ricardo Rodriguez and have him beg Ricardo Rodriguez to come back or what have you, that sort of thing. Ugh, but that's just my personal opinion. That was my little SmackDown recap. Oh, by the way, the Christian and Love the Real match was good. And also the real, I mean, not the real, uh, stand out by, you know, the savior of the masses, the savior of the unwashed masses, and our martyr. He um, he had a brand new suitcase, which, a brand new chocolate suitcase to the money in the bank. Yeah, that's cool. And I thought he was going to cash it in. I'm like, do you cash it in? And, but yeah, Cody Rhodes stopped him. I mean, pissed off by that. Cody Rhodes should have, you know, yeah, just let him happen. Just let him happen. You know, and heck, we'd probably give him a world title match. Or at least put him in contention and drag the feud out more. I mean, that would be interesting. <coughs> you can switch out the card right there. You have Alberto uh, Rio versus uh, Cody Rhodes for a number one contendership. Are you going to have um, uh Christian versus da- Damian Sandow. And to me, Christian Damian Sandow was, I mean, that would be a very interesting matchup. And you could tease that whole thing until, say, Survivor Series, where you have Cody Rhodes win the world title or something. It would be interesting. You know, my fucking sense there. Anyway, I'm going to take a small little break here. Um, that we um, be right back after this little musical interlude from OC Remix. And we'll be right back and we'll be talking a little more WWE. I'm going to be talking about this whole power struggle storyline and then we're going to get into TNA and all the interesting stuff that's going on with TNA as well. So we'll be right back right after this. Thank you so much for listening to me, listening to me, Duke CT, live here on the Duke CT Lounge. And remember, if you're not listening live, then you're listening on YouTube, Blip, and all the other stuff that I see post my videos. Again, thank you so much for listening. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Our next song from OC Remix. Some from uh, BK Country. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you. 
444-7444. Let's get the number as always is 724-444-7444. The call D, the connect me, GCT is 92417. Once again, call D is 92417. Boy, whew. getting some water here for me. Ah, get my throat all workout and everything else. All right, now let's talk about. The power struggle storyline in the WWE events. Triple H and Stephanie stuff. The, oh, the authority figures fighting for control of the WWE. Yeah, it's been done time and time again. And crowds, I don't care. I'm serious. I do not care about the storyline. It, it, it wasted so much time and strokes so much egos and such. It's just. Uh, I'm sorry. It, it just really bores me to tears. I'm like, really? I mean, and, and remember this back in 2011? He's been, Vince was relieved of his duties. How? Again, he comes back and he has all power again. How? Uh, and since Vince is the chairman of the WWE, this is authority over the company when he feels like it, you, he'll just come back again the next day and say, like, "Yeah, I'll still run this. I'll still run the show." I just, I don't know. Just no. I, I just, and then it's just every time the show it comes on. Every time the show is just going along well, especially on Raw. They do this stuff, and everything just slows on to a whole, and I'm like, eh. There's a reason why I skip a lot of stuff on Monday Night Raw. It's because of that stuff. Is that no one, it just bothers me that this stuff is happening over and over. I'm just, I'm tired of these man. I was, I'm sick of them. I've been sick of them for a good long while. It's not 1999 anymore, man. It's not 2000. I moved on. A lot of fans moved on too. I'm, I'm just, I'm sick and tired of it. But hey, if, if it keeps getting, <coughs> it's if it keeps getting ratings, people love it. I mean, if people watch, I stop watching. You know that that segment because you know I just I can't watch it. I, I don't really care. Anymore. I just don't do this. But you know what? You know, that's my thing. And heck, the channel USA wants them to do it more, so there it is. Then again, this the USA network, who um, I think Bunny Hammer's still running the thing. <sighs> she wants this, I think they want this and three hour rolls and all that stuff and I'm just tired of it. I can't watch that stuff anymore. Man, I'm getting sick of it. You were Daniel Bryan up there just doing that stuff. It just there's so much bland stuff there. So there's good stuff in the beginning and end, but there's a whole lot of nothing in the middle for the most part. I'm not crazy, am I? Am I? No. But it's just that's when I watch Raw. I mean, there's some good pieces in there, but there's a whole lot of nothing and a whole lot of bland stuff. It's just... 
It's just I'm tired of it. But that's just my personal opinion, and that's my thoughts on the whole power struggle storyline of the uh, WWE. And, well, we're going to be uh, taking a little, uh, small little break with that, and I will be coming back, and I'll be just getting into the whole TNA stuff, all the news and all that crazy stuff here on the Duke CT Lounge. We'll be right back right after this little song. All right, here on the Duke CT. Um, thank you so much for joining me, Duke CT. Back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Duke CT Lounge. Phone number, once again, is 724-444-7444. Once again, the number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect me is to me, Duke CT, is 9247. Once again, the call ID is 92417. Now, let's get on... Ah, TNA, 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 TNA. Well, we got some big news, people. Yeah, there is a new TNA head of creative, and guess who it is? It's old Uncle Eric. That's right. Eric Bischoff is back in... in and he's back in power, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Eric Bischoff. Used to be Bruce Pritchard, but yeah, you know this. I don't see this as an upgrade. Now I could be open minded and be like, "Hey, this could be." I mean, maybe he's learned some things. Maybe, maybe this this might be a new change. Maybe there would be something positive. Um. But I I don't see that happening. I don't see um, I, I don't see anything. It just feels like it's the same people, the same insular group. I, I mean, wrestling needs some new blood in it so badly. It's the same people over and over again, especially like in TNA, which is supposedly the alternative. But yet we still see the same old people rotating around after around and around. Yeah. It's frustrating. It's really frustrating. As someone who truly, truly loves this company and then, you know, all this crazy stuff around it, you're just like, man, I, I want to support you. I really want to support you, especially after that crappy, crappy August one warning stuff with Tito Ortiz. If anyone looking at this completely utterly shocked, especially I love Anderson's look of dull surprise or something. Just no, just not any fucks given. <laughs> he didn't even care at all. Just wow. <laughs> oh, goodness, it really is. And, and is know what this means. It's gonna be more of the same evil faction coming in to save the day, destroy the day. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of evil factions, and and you know what? TNA seems like they're just gonna keep doing the same damn thing over and over again. I'm tired of evil factions. I'm tired of the same old crap. It's no more. I just don't want to be 1996 anymore. It's w WCW is no more. I, I I'm tired of it. Maybe I'm being, you know, overly paranoid, but just I, I, I want, I would love to be wrong, but <sighs> TNA just, you really are just pissing me off, man. It pissing me off. Well, so there's some good stuff, but to be fair, there's some good news. They re-signed Magnus to a brand new deal, and I'm happy about that. Um, 
And um, I liked Tina Impact last night. It was a really good impact. I I liked Rude's promo. I liked this whole group there of Daniels and Kazarian. And I also thought Bad Info was going to break up, but they didn't. You know, bromance forever. Bro, bros before BFG series, baby. Um, he had some really good stuff with Saban and Bully Ray and uh, Native and Mafia stuff as well. Uh, Kurt Angle with his nice sunglasses. I don't care if people hate him. I love those damn sunglasses. And honestly, uh, I like some of the finishes here in the uh, BFG series. So, again, I really did. I thought it was a pretty good impact. And I like the way it looks. And even though they are basically stressing to be a Hogan match at BFG, I'm just happy it won't be for the title. I'm praying it will be the title. I'm hopeful it isn't because I just, uh, please. Uh, but anyway, I'm still liking Chris Saban as champion. But yeah, Tina, you just make it so hard to, to like you sometimes in your creative decisions. But, you know, I could be wrong. Anyway, um, oh, oh, I forgot one thing on SmackDown. Uh, Bray Wyatt with his uh, promo. Great stuff. But hopefully they do something more interesting with him and, you know, the wire fine because it's a bit, you know, top heavy with the Shield with their belts and U.S. championship, unless they're going to view with them and then take over and do all the beatdowns and just be stopgats with the main event faces or what have you. <sighs> God. Mm, yeah. Just. I can't find anything positive. <laughs> I just I just look in and I just see the negative. I, I need to be more positive. I'm I gotta be more positive. I have to be more positive and think that the, that they will do some good. And the whole I gotta be more positive about TNA because they had a good show this week. And I have a feeling that same is gonna continue the championship. And hey, if Hogan gonna come back out of retirement and do the leg job one more time, but at least enough for the TNA title. That's a positive thing. Can't believe I have to say that in 2013, but you know what? That's a positive thing. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to me and the Duke CT Lounge podcast live here on TalkShoe.com. Thank you so much for listening to me, my ranting and ravings. I know some people will like them, some people won't, but I always like the lively discussion boards in the comments. I always love them. I always love hearing that people always do discussion stuff. And try, I'm going to try to be more in the, uh, in the uh, discussion as well. So anyway, thank you so much for listening. This is Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all later.